Welcome back again, everyone, for our last night together of the week. And then we'll see you back again next week, of course. I figured we would end the week with just one more special guest from the special family of animals we've been talking about. And we're going to start a new story tonight, but it's one that we won't be able to finish completely because, again, it is a longer story. But we're going to start with Fox Turtle at Silver Pond Lane. Hmm, wonder if that gives you any clues. The author of this story is Susan Corman, and the illustrations, the pictures, they're drawn by Stephen Marchesi. It is early one June morning. The sun is rising over the old stone house on Silver Pond Lane. Loud quacking and honking noises fill the air as mallards and Canada geese settle on the surface of Silver Pond. In the woods behind the old stone house, Box Turtle begins to stir. Do you see Box Turtle? Box Turtle slowly climbs out of the shallow bed she made under some old oak leaves and loose soil. The top of her high domed shell is brown with splotches of orange. Her shell is very hard and strong. Hmm, I wonder what it's made of. And it helps it to protect her from predators. See here? Box Turtle is hungry. Slowly, she makes her way to the garden near the stone house. Her brown eyes scan the leafy plants for food. When she was younger, she ate slugs, snails, insects, and earthworms. Now that she is full grown, she also eats fruits and mushrooms. Box Turtle finds some ripe red strawberries in the garden and eats until she is full. Look at that. Doesn't that look delicious? Mm, what a great habitat for turtles. In the summertime, the sun is too hot for box turtle. After her meal, she retreats to the shade of the woods. She finds an old hollow log and crawls inside. Soon she is fast asleep in the cool darkness. Hmm, that was interesting. So to cool her off, she had to go someplace cool out of the heat. Hmm, I wonder if that sounds familiar. Box Turtle is resting now, but later she will work hard. The time has come to lay her eggs. Let's see, do you see her? Look at her. The afternoon shadows have grown long when Box Turtle emerges from her napping spot. She feeds again, this time munching on some juicy mushrooms from the woods. Then she sets out in search of a suitable nesting spot. As Box Turtle travels across the lawn in front of the stone house, a sprinkler shoots water everywhere. Mosquitoes and gnats hover above the wet green grass. There she is. I see a robin in that picture as well. That's a cool bird. Remember that from earlier in the week, birds? Let's finish with this page because I have a lot to tell you about our visitor today. Slowly, steadily, Box Turtle moves along on her strong legs. Soon she reaches hard pavement. As she starts across the road, a noise fills the air. Speeding towards her is an enormous, loud machine a car oh no oh no oh i wonder i wonder what's gonna happen oh i want to go on but i want to i want to save some time to meet our special visitor we'll find out what happens to box turtle tomorrow i have a feeling it's a good ending now our special visitor today came to join us a little early we're a little earlier than bedtime today because this special visitor 
when it gets dark and a little colder, goes down and digs under the mud to stay nice and warm and safe. Hmm, any guesses? Let's see, I'm gonna have to bring her out. She's been waiting patiently. Let's see, get ready to say good night, Buddha! This is Buddha! You see Buddha? What do you think? What kind of animal do you think Buddha is? I bet you know. Buddha is a turtle. And she is a special kind of turtle called a red ear slider. A red eared slider. Do you see the red? Red right there where, you know, maybe an ear could be? That's how she got her name. Now she is not from around here or she's not supposed to be. But you might see a lot of red-eared sliders outside in the wild near us, but they're not supposed to be here. They're not native animals. Often people get them as pets and they realize they get as big as Buddha look. Buddha's like bigger than my head. And they go, ugh, I can't keep him anymore. And they let him go outside. That's not okay. You should always keep animals that you have as pets or give them to someone else who can take care of them. And that's how we got Buddha. Somebody couldn't take care of Buddha anymore, and we got Buddha. In fact, some of you may know the person who gave us Buddha to take care of. Those of you that remember Miss Alexis, she was a teacher for us. Miss Alexis was moving to India and gave us Buddha to take care of because she could no longer take care of Buddha because she was moving away. And Buddha, believe it or not, we jokingly call Buddha Alexis's big sister because Buddha is older than Alexis. Yeah, Buddha is 24 years old. Yeah, she's pretty old. Pretty cool, huh? So I wanna show you some really cool things about Buddha. And let's find out, let's be herpetologists again tonight and find out if she also is a reptile because we saw lizards that were reptiles and a snake that was a reptile. And let's see if turtles are reptiles too. Look, she thinks she might be swimming a little bit. Look at that. She's got cool feet to help her swim in the water. She loves to swim in our big pond out back. Let's see. I'm looking all over Buddha's body. And though it's kind of wet, mm, I think I see a lot of scales. What do you think? And look, even on her shell, she has special scales called scoots. Oh, you're in my hair, Buddha. Called scoots on her shell. And it all is scales. And you know what? She sheds them too. She'll shed them in pieces. I don't know if she has any to shed just yet. It does not look like it. But she will even shed the little scales right off of her scoop. Oh, there's one. Look. I don't want to peel it too hard, but you see? Right there. Let's see. Oh. See this? Right there is a shed piece that might be coming off soon. See that? Oh. Oh, I think she helped me have it come off. There it is. Look, see that? She shed her skin. She shed a piece of her shell, a piece of her scoot. Pretty cool, huh? So now I have some questions about turtles. Turtles' shells are very hard and they help to protect them. But do you think that a turtle can take their shell off and leave it behind and maybe find a new one? What do you think? I've heard people think that before. Well, I'll tell you what. They cannot. And I'm gonna put Buddha down for a second. Hopefully Buddha stays still. And I wanna show you, I brought with me some turtle shells. I have one from a slider, similar to Buddha. Here's another one from a bigger slider. And then I have a really little one from another turtle. And I don't know if you can see inside any of these. Oh, there you go. You see inside, you see right in there. See, it looks like bones. Let's see if we can see any in any of these. Let's see, can we see inside and see the bone? See the little bones? They look kind of like your rib bones right here that protect your heart. Let's see, does this one have any? Oh yeah, look at those bones. Can you see them? So turtle shells have bones and they're a part of the turtle's body. And it's just like your ribs and your backbone. If you feel your back, you might be able to feel that 
bones, those spines that comes down your back. And that's exactly what a turtle shell is. It's connected to their bodies to protect them. And you couldn't take your back off, could you, and leave it at home? No, neither can turtles. Turtles cannot take off their shells. They need them on them at all times to protect them. Some turtles, like our box turtle, has a very cool shell, and that's how they got their name, box turtle. They're one of the only turtles that their shells can close up in the front and protect them, like a box. That's how they got their name. There's another cool thing I wanna show you. One of my favorite turtles. There are really big turtles around us called snapping turtles. And I have the bones from a snapping turtle. Do you see that? Look at how big that is. It's the top part of the head of a snapping turtle. And they kind of have a beak too, similar to a bird. But do you think they're birds? No, they're not birds. They certainly did not have any feathers or wings. But this is the bones of a snapping turtle. Pretty cool, huh? I'm gonna get Buddha back one more time. He's, he's taking a hike over on my couch. So here's Buddha one more time. And let's see, let's see if Buddha again has those three things that make him a reptile. He's covered in scales and we found that he shed skin. And ectothermic, that's the one we might not be able to tell as well, but Remember when I said at night when it gets a little cooler, Buddha needs to go down under the pond in the mud to get nice and warm? Yeah. And on a day like today where maybe it gets warmer during the day, Buddha crawls up out of the pond and sits on a log in the sun and warms up. So what do you think? If he needs the sun and warm places to get warm and a lot of energy, do you think he's ectothermic? I do. I think he's ectothermic. He's got scales. He shed skin and he's ectothermic. So I'm thinking Buddha here is a reptile. What do you think? Yeah. And there's one more thing that we did not talk about all week, but they mentioned it a little bit in the book. Reptiles do one more thing. So it'll actually be four things. Reptiles lay eggs. They do. They're a little different than the eggs you might eat for breakfast. Their eggs are a little bit like squishier little bit softer, but reptiles lay eggs. All right, I don't know about you, but I think it just might be time to say good night to Buddha. What do you think? Should we try that song for the very last time? I think we might be experts at it by now. What do you think? All right, Buddha, let's get ready. Reptiles have scales all around, all around. And reptiles shed skin when they grow, when they grow. And reptiles, they're ectothermic. They're ectothermic. I just realized I said that last part a little bit wrong. Oh, well, we all make mistakes. And that's okay. And I think Buddha's ready to go back to her pond, too. So we're all going to say together, good night, Buddha. Good night, everyone. Thanks again.